your back too long for good. Pretty much. Yeah. You're, you're cancer free. You've been. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. yeah. That was an experience. <laughs> well, I, you know, as from a financial planning point of view, 65 is Medicare, so 64 is a lot. That gap when people retire and don't, like my, my stepfather turned 65 this August. He rolled the dice for like five years without insurance. Oh, you know, and wow. You just don't know what's going to, yep. no matter how healthy you are. Yep, you look yep. pretty healthy, you know, and yep. stuff can happen anyway. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. It uh, surprised me. I was a Expected that I was planning on going, and when I exited that whole thing, I was uh, about a month away from getting on my bike and going to Great Lakes and doing di dipping my toe in all five Great Lakes okay. trip. <laughs> Didn't do that, so still have that to do on my list. All right, the lights on, so okay. we'll wait when that light okay. comes on. I'm not even sure. Okay, so it looks like this camera leered. Is how you see it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Good morning, everybody. It's Tony here with Rebel Financial. Thank you for joining us again for our weekly podcast. Today's guest from the Compost Exchange is Ray Lear. Ray, thank you uh, for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, so the Compost Exchange has to do with you know neighborhood recycling of compost, and that's what we're going to talk about. So, before we get into that, I want just a little bit about you. Tell us your because you are from Columbus. You moved yep. away for a little bit in your back. So, tell us you know what what brought you on this journey. How did you get into this? Um, I moved to uh, Athens, Ohio, in 2007. And um, I had a food company for 30 years and moved back from Norfolk, Virginia, trying to grow it some more in Athens, Ohio. So I built a big building, 12,000 square foot warehouse, seven acres of land. And along the way, between 2007 and 2010 or so, kept hearing about composting at the farmer's market, which is very vibrant down there, and, and just other individuals. And so I, I kept questioning, well, why doesn't somebody do it? And they, well, nobody wants to risk the money. And so I said, it's something that's really needed. So I did it. And I um, opened a class to Ohio EPA licensed facility down there next to my big building. It was about this uh, compost thing, it was about 7,000 square feet. And it worked out real well. Had a booth at the farmer's market. They thought it was crazy. They're going to pay you to bring their food scraps. And I said, yeah, it worked out really great. And so in 2014 or thereabouts, I decided to end the, uh, the run with the, the food business, decided to sell the whole thing. The local recycling people, uh, uh, that was done by the um, um, Solid Waste District, they ran the recycling at nonprofit. They bought the whole thing and they actually kept the food, the food waste recycling part of it. And now they do everything down there. So, but anyway, in, in um, 2016, I came back to Columbus, opened three uh, drop-off booths like I had done in, at the Athens Farmers Market, yeah, Worthington, Granville, and, and Newark, and that worked out well. And, and, and at the same time, I, I met uh, some two guys that I hadn't seen in a couple of years, and they were doing a, they just starting up a thing called Innovative Organic Recycling. And I decided to become partners with them. So the last three years, I've been helping to grow that business and back in May this year I decided to, I had you know done what I should do there and they were on their way and I decided to leave Innovative Organics Recycling and go back to the compost exchange which I had done all the time on the weekends with these drop-off booths so I was working seven days a week it was crazy and um, so I decided to go back and just do residential food scrap recycling and that's okay. kind of where we're at now okay so well, let, let's come back a little bit because yeah. I think you know most people want to do what's good and right for the environment yep. and such, uh, but yep. but we don't for a number of reasons. So let's right. talk about you know why composting is important. What what it, when we're not composting, what is the damage? Well, uh, like last year in this, just this county, let alone the country, but in this county last year, 150,000 tons with a T of food scraps went to the landfill. Okay. With all the work that we did at Innovative Organics the last three years, last year we, we recycled and diverted only 2,000 tons. So there's a lot to do. And the reason why the, those materials shouldn't go to the landfill is that the, the, the landfill the materials are just, they're put in there and then they're just covered up, which means there's no air. And to, to uh, produce um, a, a product or end result that is beneficial to air, water, and soil, okay, things that we all need, those materials need to go, they need to stay aerobic or have oxygen you know, in and amongst the materials. But it goes anaerobic in a landfill. 
which and they break down, but they break down differently, and they create methane. Methane is a is a atmospheric gas. It's 25 times worse than CO2. What worse for the environment? For, yeah, for for the the global warming thing that some people will dispute, but you know, and that that's reality. It's 25 times worse than CO2. Okay. And so, plus the other benefits of, you know, better uh, uh, soil, better water, there's no, you know, when you use compost, you don't need fertilizers, there's no runoff in the Lake Erie, that mm -hmm. type of thing, right? All right? And uh, a lot of benefits, you know, local jobs, uh, and I always tell people this one thing, is that, it, that, that food scrap recycling um, is created, it's a, it's a, I call it a locally produced natural resource, because when you're in your kitchen, and you're doing that salad or making whatever you're making and you have something that's the outer you know maybe it's an apple core or banana peel and you are right there and you can either trash it or compost it or start that process of recycling that food so you create that natural resource at that very moment and I think that if people realize gee yeah, <laughs> that's what we're doing or not doing you're also at that time you know you can put in the landfill and you're doing that you know, methane, right. right? Yeah. Right. Or do something, and that's all the difference there is. When we, when I was with Innovative Organics, I, w I was the guy in charge of the commercial accounts, and I would go and, you know, you have that that opportunity right there in the kitchen, boom, we're booming. That's you know, because you put it somewhere. It doesn't you know, those hundred fifty thousand tons, they don't get there magically. Right. We do it one peel at a time, every day, all of us. Yeah. And so, how do you fix that? Simply put it here and get used to taking that container to the right place. Yeah. And that, that's, that, from that moment, that, that, that's pretty easy to kind of, oh, okay, I can do that. Most people, you know, they can do that. Right, right make it easy. <laughs> so, but it, so the numbers you said, we put about 150 tons and you... 150,000 tons. 150,000 tons, right, right, right. right. And you, was it 2,000 tons? We did 2,000 tons so that's, last... That's not a bad start. I mean, No, it's, it's not. You know, it's, it's, but it's just, a, again, uh, not a whole lot. Uh, all the effort that, that we, we uh, expended to get there. And, uh, you know, and, you know but, but, but that, that's the mission. That's, and, you know, mm -hmm. you, you might ask, well, aren't you tired, Ray? <laughs> no, man, because <laughs> it's a mission thing that, that this needs done. It isn't that hard to do if you have the right infrastructure. If people understand why they should, and then the, the, they're quick at the farmers markets, right? Right. You know they're they're quick to when they walk up to the booth that we have there, and they'll quick to say, "Well, okay, now that I understand why why I should, you got to make it easy, you got to make it convenient, and you got to make it affordable." And that's we've already done that. Right. So as long as you have this system, this infrastructure to receive it, and then the system that gets people to realize. This is not real hard, right? And because they think it is, right. they think it's going to smell, right. well, you know, and it doesn't if you do it right. Yeah. And so it's just about having the right system. You, you had mentioned too one of the benefits. Um, you know, it's great that people do compost in their backyard. Sure. But there's drawbacks to that, right? Let's talk some, about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And in, in some case, many cases, they don't have enough carbon. A good a good compost pile needs carbon, nitrogen. Carbon comes from wood chips or brown material. Uh, nitrogen comes from the food, air, airspace or porosity in the pile, right? So it doesn't, it can't be compact. It's got to have, and that's where the chips or leaves come in because they, they create air pockets mm -hmm. in in there, um, at least initially. And you need moisture. You know, moisture comes from, in many cases, just the food waste itself or if it's a pile outside, you know, it rains, right? And so as long as you have those four things in the right proportion, that thing will start cooking away. Mm -hmm. And so, so most people don't have enough carbon. All right, so that's one thing. The other thing that that's, that sometimes happens, they'll, they'll put proteins in the pile, which attract critters. So most uh, most websites that that people go to and they'll look up, well, what 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 are the yeses and nos? Well, most will say, you know, no no meat, no fish, no chicken, because it attracts critters. Right. right. So in a commercial facility uh, like ours, the one at Innovative Organics that I was with, uh, we have a big grinder, and so we we take the material, we take compostable service where the, the plates, the clamshells that many restaurants serve now, but the, there's, you know, there's no guarantee that they'll want them. But they serve, the, it's a really good intention, right? right? But the, the place like Innovative Organics, you know, it will take, it does take uh, clamshell service where that's made from plants. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. But those are, the, those are the main thing is that, is that, you know, critters get in the mix and people don't like that. And, 
you know, I don't blame them. Right. And then a lot of times the, the lack of enough carbon right. in, the, in the pile. So getting the mix right. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I was always taught, well, you don't want to put meat in there, but the reality is you don't want to do that, as I learned, because you don't want the animals coming yeah. around, and that's what's going right. to do that. Right, right. So you, you, can, you have a list on the, on the yeah. website, right? So if you go to, and we're not going to do that now, thecompostexchange.com, poke around there and you will see, uh, you'll see a list on there of do's and don'ts of yeah. that. So, um, so let's talk about the back end of this. Um, they give you the compost then. Um, I know, you're, you know you use it, you're working with in some capacity, innovative yep. organic recycling. What happens once you've taken all this? Okay, so let's imagine like uh, every weekend, which is true, I have uh, about 5,000 pounds of food scraps that I've collected at the five drop off so every week about every week that much week. winter time summertime wow. people ask you know the, the because we're farmers markets and they close they'll ask them, you know sometime like right about now when they walk up and they're considering it what happened in the winter and my reaction is they leave and we stay and they go all winter yeah and so we're out there all winter and in reality people come mm -hmm. even though we're by ourselves right you know because they got used to the habit right. in fact they start complaining if they even if we even hint or they yeah. you know they're they're hoping hey you guys aren't leaving are you no we're not we're, we stay all year yeah. and so that's been real nice that the, that the folks at these markets have allowed us to stay yeah and we're Whole Foods and on Lane Avenue on Sundays and you know same thing we're there all year yeah yeah so yeah okay so, but so what happens after that is yeah, yeah. so the material gets collected I take it down to, to still Innovative Organics and it's in a building and there's a concrete pad. And so just imagine I back the truck up, I unload the materials on the pad, that's a big pile of, you know, um, and I get a chance to look at another side thing. I get a chance to look at all the stuff that people throw away. And so that gets another issue of preventing. Right, right. But let's go back to the story, which is the stuff is there, I think in the big skid, the skid steer, the big you know, loader, um, bulldozer kind of thing, and that's called skid steer, and I, I add the carbon to it, secret secret sauce recipe, okay. right? And then I tumble it. Just imagine flipping those materials so that they get mixed together. And then usually there's a big pile already in the building. So I'll lay those materials across the face in layers. Okay. All right? Then I'll cover it with more carbon. And I drive away. And it doesn't smell okay. if you do that correctly every time. Okay. It well, really doesn't. Well, only because we have a prop. Let's yes. talk about this is really what is going to help you know, you're going to put your compost in this before you deliver it to Ray, and this is what's going to right. help contain right. the smell and all those things. And by the way, so we have a recyclable... Well, it's a, it's a compostable plant-based uh, liner, compostable and people plant. sometimes think it's plastic, right? Because it looks like plastic bag, yeah, yeah. but it's not. Uh, it's compostable, it's plant-based, um, and um, so what happens, people will ask, what happens to the liner when it gets to the pile? Okay, so we have, like, like I said, 5,000 pounds, there's liners, there's the food scraps, uh, they're being tumbled, it goes in the pile, I cover it up. If you were to go back in that pile in two weeks and kind of uncover that particular week's uh, materials, you wouldn't find those liners, they melt. Okay. Matter of fact, on a really, really hot stretch of July, right, that we just went through, uh, sometimes I, I would lift, I lift those, those, those liners out of the bucket, because that's what happens, people bring their, li their bucket with the liner uh -huh. into the to the drop-off centers, I take it, take the lid off, take that liner out, and put it into my container, a bigger one, and get them a new liner, and they walk away. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, sometimes in July, those liners are already starting to degrade. They're starting okay. to melt. Okay. And there'll be holes in the, if they've been there for three weeks or four weeks. That the heat will start to melt the material. Okay. And so that's what happens. They literally melt away and they disappear. Okay. Well, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so then the compost is refined and well, then it cooks. Uh -huh. that, that's the system. We we don't turn it in, in the windrows. It's in the building, and so it's it's a ASP system, which means that there's uh, forced air into the pile. Well, that that's where the oxygen comes from. Okay. And so uh, that let's say you have a pile that's let's say 15 feet wide, 50 feet deep, eight feet high, 10 feet high, and then and you fill that that chamber. Right, in about two weeks it'll start to drop. To you know, thirty days later it's a, you know maybe eight feet high. It was ten. That means that there's no porosity, there's no the airspace because the critters are cooking away. Mm -hmm. Right, it's 150 degrees in there, literally in two days. In there, yeah. After two days of the new stuff, 150 and temp it. 
-hmm. and then just start eating away. So what that means is that the stuff is starting to collapse on itself. Okay, so you have to flip it to the next chamber. You have to get that air back. Get it there. fluffed. Yeah, and that's the same thing you do at home, in your three compartment thing. You know, the three 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 bin system that, right. that people sometimes use. Yeah. Right, I don't know pallets. I went home myself. That's what happens when you when you fill that first uh, chamber, and you, the, the the technique is move to the second one that fluffs it back up. That's what it's yeah. doing. Well, it, yeah. you know, growing up, even thirty, I'm from Chicago. Yeah, so yeah. Thirty five years ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, my mother had purchased a tumbler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and so I don't know why, I didn't know then why we would get the sawdust and things like that, but that's right. So it needs carbon, needs nitrogen, yeah, needs yeah, air, yeah, needs yeah, the yeah, oxygen yeah. and such like yeah. that. So, okay, so then we get to the end and now it's composed. Now it's, 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 it's cooked away, it's, um, it's changed, evolved into something that's usable. Um, you, for, for an EPA licensed facility, you have to get it labbed. Okay. Before anything leaves the site, it has to pass the labs. Okay. It's about a four-page document, and there's a couple things, salmonella and um, another um, not very pleasant end result that might, might be there that, that that's what they really test for, is okay. to make sure these two things aren't, um, the, the, the parts per million are really low. Yeah. But once you pass, you can then make soil from it or sell it straight up, and that, that's how so it works. That's the whole, yeah, that's the, that's end of the, the process, process, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. at a minimum, there's an opportunity to go there and get some really good. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and if you're if you're a member of the compost exchange, every time you renew your membership, you get a portion as a benefit free. Okay. All yeah. Right. So it's 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 not a you know, it's not a huge amount, but it's you know people sometimes ask, do I get some back? Right. And, right. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You do. You renew and you get some. You get you know just ask for it and we'll give give you a, a two a, a two gallon bucket free. Well, and what a lot of people appreciate is how much goes into this and why there's a cost to it, right? I mean, it's a good thing for oh, society. Oh yeah. Yeah. But there's but there, a lot it's more of a, work involved. There's more of a it's more of an art than a science yeah. because people ask. Uh, but there's labor and there's. That's there's right. You have to manage it. You have to move it. You have to test it. Um, you have to sort it. Sometimes, like with commercial accounts, they'll come with. You know, bottles and cans in that people kind of aren't as unlike unlike this system with the with the folks who belong to the compost exchange. Um, people at restaurants have to be trained to understand why you know what goes in where, and they're mentally they have to be the, there at that moment when they're putting that plastic away. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't. Yeah. So that that's really the, the I mean, we we sort uh, some of our accounts. We get three or four thousand pounds from Whole Foods sometimes. You have to sort it. Yeah. Make sure there's there's you know, it's yeah. it's a labor intensive uh, um, kind of entity. But um, so on your side, I get they have the drop offs. Is yeah. that is that what there is right now? If they're going to do with the compost exchange, is it? It's a, oh, is, so we have we five have? five drop off booths, uh, and mostly at the farmers markets on Saturday. One on Sunday at Whole Foods. Kind of uh, in case you miss Saturday, you have Whole Foods to go to, which a lot of people do because I run that myself. Um, then we have a curbside system or program in which, you know, like the drop off is you come to us. Curbside is I'll come to you. It's right now, it's on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And um, yeah, it's growing, and that's what people prefer right. is curbside. Well, it's just and easy, so, right? And the, the trick with the curbside to, to really have people kind of like get on board with that is that if you form a team, it's a lot cheaper, mm -hmm. okay, to, to have me come to one spot and get four buckets versus four spots of bucket, 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 bucket. So a lot of people are discovering that, that, hey, if we can work together as a team, neighborhood team, and then, hey, maybe as a city, mm -hmm. you know, right. we'll, we'll get this thing knocked out. And honestly, I think it's, 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 it shouldn't take more than five years to have most of the city in a system that generates a lot of diversion away from that, the 150,000 tons that went to the landfill. It shouldn't be anything close to that in five years or less. Yeah. It's just a matter of... You know, getting getting people to realize why well, do it. It's the education factor, um, and I'm working with a group called Kids That Compost, mm -hmm. brand new group, a brand new company, nonprofit, and they're getting kids to get involved with, uh, uh, kind of signing up people to to do curbside. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy that collects, and they go out and they get the kids to go out and sell it. Kids That Compost. Kids well, That Compost. I, I told you I met you because my daughter dragged me to. Whole yeah. Foods, you know, one wanted to get involved with this, so um, so I'll, I'll have to make sure she knows about that. Let, let's one example uh, along the lines of what we're talking, Bexley. Oh, okay. Right, so let's just talk about the success story there. Oh, okay. Well, um, 
what was it? Again, it was I think it was 17. I went and I opened a, a booth on Thursdays, a drop-up booth at Bexley's Farmers Market. That's right. That was the, that was a year later. And Mayor Ben Kessler uh, and I talked a couple times. He was interested. He's he's a real go-getter with this kind of environmental movement for the city of Bexley. He wants to be a leader. He wants Bexley to become to be known as a leader, leadership kind of city, mm -hmm. with that kind of thing. So yeah. he was interested, and we talked. We talked and. Met with the city council and, and made a presentation, and they, and they decided to do a, a pilot two years ago, um, uh, November, this coming November. We launched that pilot for about 400 people. And they each got a bucket, and we were swapping buckets at that time. We didn't have the liner system in place yet. Um, and uh, so we, we delivered the, the buckets and started collecting, and, and uh, people liked it. and, and um, and to, to go through that, that other example with the uh, recycling people, one of the things that, that really made it um, uh, successful, I think from their point of view, they, they really liked it, was that we would, we would on purpose place the buckets in the same spot, perfectly placed every week, and they, they kind of noticed that because the other recyclers didn't. We were really crazy about the consistency. Mm -hmm. And as simple an idea as that is, I mean, how hard does it take to pick up the bucket where they put it, the, the resident, and put it in the same spot so they would know it was, it was one, it was changed, it, was, yeah. it had been done, and two, it was, it was neat, it was organized, and they weren't used to that. Was that a, a pile of compost lying Yeah, 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 they, it was, like we never, that. never had an issue with, with uh, you know, um, scraps that fell over, fell out, or dropped, whatever, and they discovered it, and, um, and they really liked the fact that we, we you know, something as simple as it, it really is, that we cared enough to do the, that consistency every week. Mm -hmm. And so the city liked it, uh, the mayor liked it, uh, they voted to do the whole city last fall, so we went citywide in, in uh, February of this year. And uh, initially 850 some signed on, and there's a, I'm gonna get, let me not forget that, that one issue. But, uh, and now they have about 1,200, uh, according to George Hanyati, who's uh, the owner of Innovative Organics, and he still does it. And, they're growing it every month. More people sign on, and as long as they're consistent, people will like it, and they'll, they'll get probably of the 4,400 residents. They'll probably get maybe 2,000 eventually. Mm -hmm. You know, but that that's really the the, the secret of it is that uh, of that that success and this success with the, what we do is that people who sign on, they're the ones that that well, I've been doing it seven years, uncorking taking the lid off buckets, right? Mm -hmm. right? And in seven years, I can still count this many fingers, the number of uncorking lids that, that doesn't belong there comes out of my mouth. Okay. I mean, literally, the folks who do this, they're mentally there at that moment right. when they have to decide that where does this mm -hmm. go, where does that go. Right. It's, it, I never have a problem. Right. And that's really a testament to their mission right. of well, an individual well, thinking... I don't make a difference. Well, what you do matters, yeah. and, it, and it's yeah. You know, it does require that you mentally are there when you do it, but it isn't real hard if you commit. And that's what that's why Bexley worked. That's why this works. That people. Um, it's funny at the, at the markets when people walk up and they'll ask you, "How's this work?" I'll, and I'll see somebody with a bucket coming, you know, a member, and I'll say, "Hold on, just watch," and they kind of back off, and they. You know, listen to the the interplay of what I say and what they do, and and uh, and then I'll say, ask them. Don't ask me. Ask, right, right. and they'll ask the, the member. Ah, it's so easy. And uh, sometimes I'll, I'll have somebody walk up who's a member. It's their first week of doing it. And I'm going, this is great, because I get to I get to ask them how to go. And I know they're going to say, piece of cake. Right, Some right. people will say our trash is only this much now. It's like ridiculous. And that's the other thing. That, that one of the benefits and you know, why I do it is that in some cities, honestly, what's happened is that the trash, the real, real trash, what's left, gets picked up every two weeks now because there's so much less of it. Yeah. They're recycling their bottles and cans and so forth. They're recycling their food scraps. What's left? Hardly anything. So why come every week? Yeah. No, that's awesome. And that's, and that's what isn't really addressed. And people kind of... You know, but that means that the, the, well, we have a contract with Rumkey or Waste Management and they won't like it and so on. Well, 
you know, they have to adapt too. You're asking us to adapt. We really do because it's what we all should do. They need to adapt too. Yeah. You know, and, and come, yeah. let's do this because it's just the right thing to do. And, you know, let's find a way to, to make a profit at, at doing what's the right thing to do. Right. And to and, and, employ people and get and well, Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it does create more jobs doing this than it does doing the just trash. Right, right. Okay, so. well, listen, I, a couple things I'm going to mention. One is the bag that you talk is it's called the EcoSafe. Is that That's right? That's the brand, yeah. So, uh, EcoSafeBags.com if you want to look into that. Now, the other thing is if you are in a community, uh, you know, push the leaders of the community, you know, off screen. Ray and I talked about some of the Well, on, honest, that, honestly, the, the, the key is to change policy. In the states in which this is working, they, they, they're working because they change policy at the top. And once policies change, you, you will, uh, if you're a certain size, a commercial account, you will have to put your stuff over here that's recyclable and you can't put it over there anymore. That type of policy change. Four states in the East Coast, of course, the crazy folks in California and Oregon and Washington, they're doing it. Uh, Denver, Colorado, uh, Austin, Texas, and all the leaders, right? Minnesota people, right? Um, but that, that policy change is key to getting this thing to, to get done faster. Yeah. And that takes political will. Yeah. And but honestly, folks, folks are ready for it. They really are. Well, and soil is becoming a, a commodity. It, it's dissipating here, going into our oceans. So, yeah. But anyway, well, listen, we appreciate you coming in, right? Sure. It was good talking to you. Good meeting you. So, uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Uh, please, you know, if you think about it, subscribe to our YouTube channel if this interests you and you want to keep seeing these. But otherwise, have a great Labor Day weekend, and we'll see you next week. Remember now, compost it. Then compost this whole week. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>